Yeah, I'm uh, Anne Nangulu. I'm professor of history from Mo University. And I'm also currently working as the Deputy Commission Secretary in charge of quality audit um, and standards at the Commission for University Education in Kenya. Um, academically, I trained in Kenya from my primary school to secondary school. I went to the University of Nairobi where I did my first degree, um, a Bachelor's of Arts in History. I immediately also did a master degree in history and I was employed as a junior research fellow at the university. Uh, partly then I later on moved to a new university that was just beginning, uh, that is the uh, Mo University and this is in the early 90s. Um, I was at Mo University for four years and then I proceeded on leave of absence to undertake my PhD in the University of West Virginia, uh, that's West Virginia University in the US, where I did my PhD in history. And uh, I graduated in a PhD in history in 2001, and I immediately came back to Kenya. I should say that the only job I've done, I've been in academia. I've risen from uh, the rank of being at the lowest a junior research fellow with the level of a graduate assistant, later on a tutorial fellow, became a lecturer, senior lecturer, associate professor, and I'm a professor of history uh, for the last, uh, I should say, since 2012. Uh, I would like to say that uh, I've done a lot of research, uh, particularly in the disciplinary research, uh, touching on indigenous knowledge, I've done uh, indigenous knowledge and preservation of culture, particularly among my people in Western Kenya, that is the Luya of Western Kenya bordering Uganda. I've also been interested to do matters on constitutional and constitutional history, and specifically look at how constitutional and the constitutionalism affect citizens and the human uh, beings in society, matters also touching on citizenry, and also on the human rights. I've also diversed and done research on food security, and that was what I did on my PhD. Mainly what promoted me is to look at food security as one of the basic necessities in, in, in society, and see historically how people have uh, survived uh, in very hostile environment and good environments to produce food. And this made me do a research on West Pokot, which is one of the marginal areas in Kenya, I should say semi and semi-arid areas, and see how the population have survived more in this region. If you look at this particular research, it was mainly historical, environmental, ecological. I could say that it transverses through anthropological, uh, looking at the past and the present and the cultural impact on the people, and of course looking at the interventions coming in, particularly food aid, Western intervention. And my argument is that interventions end up destroying the environment rather than sustaining uh, the food security. It destroys the ecological, particularly dams, and now people also become more of bakers than utilizing and adapting to the environment. This is also a, re a region that is invested with cattle wrestling, uh, a lot of uh, con ethnic conflicts, and out of it, I was promote, uh, prompted to look at security matters. And it has, it's one of the areas that I've been working on, uh, to look at insecurity and people fighting over resources, looking at ethnic insecurities, looking at insecurity and the role of the state in urban areas, whereby also generally looking at crime. It has also made me start looking at international insecurity and transborder insecurity, issues of terrorism and also how it affects higher education, particularly infiltration and radicalization of the youth at university level and in higher institutions. So this is one of the areas looking at it that if the society is insecure, then it's also not able to produce the food or to sustain itself. And the whole issue of migration, displacement, it's one of those areas that I look at it also. But uh, being a woman, I've also coming from a, a background of village life to where I've reached, I've also not forgotten to look at gender matters. And my concern is not equality, but my concern is equity for all. 
it doesn't matter if you are men or female. So um, I'm not really in feminism, but I'm looking at gender equity, both opportunities for the, for, the, for the male, for the female, for the youth, and for the aged. In literal sense, how do we use equity, access, and relevance to benefit society? I also, at some stage, took interest to do training in quality assurance looking at the university expansion of university globally and in my country Kenya I had an interest to see that the knowledge produced is of quality and I've done um, training in quality assurance in higher education and out of it is what ended up giving me the opportunity to serve as the deputy commission sector in charge of quality audit and standards I have a big responsibility to coordinate quality and quality matters in uh, universities in Kenya both private private and public. It has also given me opportunity to travel uh, widely in Africa, in Europe, particularly to benchmark to see how education is being done. This has ended up giving me an opportunity also to, to collaborate with the University of Bayreuth uh, in Germany, where I've also now for at least over more than eight years a coordinator of BIGSAS, that is the, uh, mainly the Bayreuth International Graduate School with focus on African studies. And I've also served as a visiting professor uh, or a guest professor in this university. Now we have done uh, various projects with them. And one of the projects I've done is that we have come up with AMAS, which is a European funded project uh, that is Africa Mobility uh, academic mobility for Africa sustainability development and this project is enormous in the sense that we want to carry out in Africa mobility in six in five uh, countries with the University of Bayreuth as a partner and we want to look at uh, students moving from Eduardo Mondalin in Mozambique and staff also move uh, the same from Mo University in Kenya Kalavi uh, 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 Abomi Kalavi in Benin, uh, Mohammed V in Rabat, that is in Morocco, uh, Atsababa, University of Atsababa in, in Ethiopia, and uh, of course Bayreuth as a technical partner and Mo University as the applicant. I should say that I'm the coordinator of this project and we are looking forward that this project should be sustainable. At the end of the project, which we are looking for years, now the mobility has started, students are moving, staff will also be moving. Master students move from one year in the, and transfer credit from one university to another. And then the PhD moves six to months to one year also, and then staff will be moving three to six months. What we are trying to say is that we want to showcase that Africa has good things to offer, rather than looking at South-North partnership but we are building South-South partnership. And we look at it that this should also go to other countries and we are interested to partner with Latin American countries, uh, uh, other African and other European countries, and so that we can see that this AMAS project at the end of four years with the European funding, it should be sustained and showcase that the, 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 the world is a global village and we can all uh, have good practices, good initiatives, which we can promote through postgraduate training. In the process, also build capacity for postgraduate training, postgraduate research, and also academic research and academic collaboration and networking. Uh, and we are using this as a vehicle also to preach peace, that academia is one of those ways that you can bring people together, transborder with the students, and so that we also appreciate one another as humanity living in a global uh, village. This is partly what I can say, currently what I'm doing, but I've, I'm engaged in various <laughs> activities. Um, I've, I've, I'm also doing another project on which is called CATA Consortium for Africa Development with other African and British and Swedish companies. And we just thank the funders, particularly we have been benefiting from the DAT, that is the German extent, uh, the European Union, the Rockefeller Foundation, uh, the Melinda Bell, uh, Gates Foundation, Carter Foundation. So we, 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 we appreciate that within this global setup, we have got funders who help us, and not to forget our own universities, which are always our best for us, 
we get a lot of support from the university. I've been getting support from more university and the government of Kenya, particularly to allow us to travel and work very hard uh, on what we do to promote academia for the benefit of society.